Welcome back to the channel, Book Dragons. I'm really glad you're here with me today. As you may be aware, one of the perks that I give my patrons on Patreon is to pick a book for me to read every quarter. And so I draw a name from a hat, and whoever gets drawn out of the hat gets to pick a book for me for that quarter. So the book that was chosen for me for the third quarter of 2024 was Gunmetal Gods by Zamil Akhtar. I'm going to be doing a book review for that today, so stay tuned here. I do want to take this moment to quickly shout out my patrons. Thank you so much for all you do to support my channel. It really means a lot to me, and I'm really glad I got to read this book. So let's go ahead and move into the book review. And I'm just going to give you highlights. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so you don't need to worry about spoilers at all. This is a flintlock fantasy set in a Middle Eastern Arabian setting. And I thought that was a really cool backdrop for the story to take place in. Uh, Zamil himself is Middle Eastern, of course, and he wanted to write a fantasy story set in the surroundings of his homeland. And I absolutely love that. I think that's a great way to start out your career as a writer, to kind of write what you know, write what you understand and what you grew up with. I, I think that's great. And I really enjoyed seeing this in that setting. I have not read any books set in Middle Eastern settings yet. And so that, that was kind of cool for me. And you may be thinking, oh, well, Chaz, haven't you read Arabian Nights? No, I haven't read Arabian Nights at all. So it, it's on my list to eventually try out, of course. But th this is my first experience with that setting. So I really enjoyed that. And it is a flintlock fantasy as well. So you've got powder guns, you've got bullets and oars that are being used. And as you can tell from the title... There is gunmetal involved. <laughs> so uh, it, it was just a, a really fun story seeing that setting. And so now let's talk a little bit about the characters in the story. There are two main POVs in the story, which I thought was a, a great way to write the story too. You're not trying to establish a whole bunch of main POV characters. You, you've just got two mainly. And that is Kiva who is a Janissary warrior, and he's well known in this world for assassinating a powerful Magus, and he's kind of older at this point, he's retired, and the ruler of this particular part of the world known as the Shah has recruited him to come back and come into his service to do another job for him. And then the other main POV character is Micah. And Micah is also a warrior. He works for the king of a conquering kingdom. He is on a mission from that king to take back the kingdom that is currently being ruled by the Shah. And I kind of got the impression that the kingdom that Micah works for are somewhat similar to the Romans. And so that was kind of interesting. It's, it, it's almost got a historical fantasy feel of sorts. And so uh, that, that was really interesting. He and his elite warriors end up being baptized in this river. And he is acknowledged as Micah the Metal. <laughs> which is an, an interesting name. But it gains more literal prominence later on in the story. And I won't spoil why, but it's... It's a really interesting plot line. We'll just say that. And the main thrust of the story ends up being a battle of wits and minds and the armies of these two main characters, Kiva and Micah the Metal. The magic in this world is solely relegated to those of the Magi. The magic is kind of cool in that it is completely infused by the powers of Jinn. So if you're familiar with jinn, these are kind of like the fey creatures of the Middle Eastern world. It's where we get our term genie from, you know, the genie in the bottle, that whole thing. So 
All of the magic in this world is infused by the jinn, and the magi go to a place called Zathuria, I, I think is how it's pronounced, to, to be trained in the magical arts and to learn how to control the jinn so that they can use the powers that the jinn provide them. If you have magic in this world, it is solely because you possess a blessing of the jinn to be able to use their magic in the physical realm. Because the, the jinn exists outside the physical realm, but their powers are able to be used by people in the physical realm. So it, it's really unique. It's really different. I thought that was really cool. There's some great action sequences in the story as well. And there's a lot of twists and turns that I did not expect either. And at some point in the story, certain characters end up going to uh, the underworld to seek out some of the, the darker djinn. And those particular characters are said to be dark drinkers. So they are the ones that possess the, the darkest magics of this world. So it, it's just really, really cool. There are some themes explored in this as well, primarily those of loss, uh, loss of loved ones, and the thirst for vengeance that sprouts up from that. So I've kind of already talked about what I liked about the story, but just in a nutshell, I really enjoyed the character development. There are a couple of extra POVs that pop up later on in the book, about 70% into the book or so. Those two POVs really add to the story. So that was handled really well. The character development was excellently done, I thought. And I really enjoyed the mystery and the intrigue that is happening throughout the story. I really found myself wanting to learn more about this world and about these particular characters. I definitely found myself wanting more after the book ended. It definitely left me hanging and made me want to read the next book in the series. Uh, so that was great. I thought the magic was really cool, as I said. So this book has a lot going for it. It's a self-published fantasy, and for a debut novel, I thought it was really, really well done. So I'm really glad I got to read this for my patron pick. It had been on my list for a while. I'd seen several reviews for it, and I was pretty impressed by what I heard. So... I finally got to read it, and I'm really glad I did. If there is one thing that I would say that kind of took it down a notch for me, there were some moments of dialogue that just kind of felt really wonky and didn't quite seem to fit the characters that the dialogue was coming from. And there were some slow moments that I felt could have been condensed a little bit. But uh, overall, I'm really impressed with the story. And as far as my rank goes, I'm going to put this in my hoard. It's definitely something that I really enjoyed. It's something I think I would want to own at some point. So that's why it goes in my hoard. It didn't quite meet that soaring level. And it's probably on the very low end of my hoard tier. Like I, I, I think I would need to read more books in the series before I really decide, okay, is this going to be a, a top tier series for me. So I uh, very much enjoyed my time with it though. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Does this book sound like it's something that you would enjoy reading? Have you already read the book? Is it something that really worked for you? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to be able to dialogue with you about this book. And until next time guys, make sure you read more books and I will talk with you very soon.